got here and my responsible was very happy. She stole a chicken from one of the nearby houses, got a friend to kill it, and, uh, and then now we're going to have meat. This is Anna Campbell on the front lines of the war in Syria. No one in Britain except her closest friends and family knew she was there. This footage of her was kept in confidence until now. A very important part of life here. The first thing that we do is uh, have a cup of tea and sometimes we have to make a fire right? And there you go. Anna Campbell, a qualified plumber from East Sussex, had come to join the Kurdish women's armed units in Syria. My name is Helene Karachok. My name from before was Anna Campbell. Uh, I joined the YPG in March of last year, and now I've just finished. We've just finished this education of ideology and military. She was kind of an interesting person. She was the kind of person that um, she wouldn't tiptoe around, you know, English, being English and polite and. She was just very um, grounded in what she wanted. Back home, she'd been involved in campaigning for human rights and animal welfare. Political activism was in her DNA. Mum and Dad are both involved in like political activities and stuff, so I guess there's that. Um, I think it's genetic <laughs> more than uh, upbringing. Um, but she was, she was very uncompromising. Very determined. The Kurds say they fight for women's liberation in the Middle East. The female fighters of the YPJ have been playing a major part in the battle to defeat so-called Islamic State. She was not held back by any fears that I know of, even fear of death. What was her route into this? Everything's online nowadays. Um, you can find out about the, the YPG, YPJ activities, you can find out about the, the new socio-political system that's emerged, they call it the revolution in Rojava, which is utopian, I and mean, it's egalitarian, women have equal rights, equal representation. It was these ideals, the feminist ideology of the Kurdish women, that had a strong appeal. So I joined because I wanted to support the revolution and because I wanted to participate in the, uh, in the revolution of women that is being built up here. But what Anna was doing was potentially illegal. Authorities in the UK say there is no just cause for taking up arms abroad. Whenever she called home, she never fully told her family about the danger she was preparing to face. We knew a little bit. She, she was quite, I think, protective of us by just mm -hmm. giving us little bits of information. She just downplayed it so much. She just said, you know, I'm fine. I'm just, I'm just sitting at, on a lookout post, eating hummus and not really doing much and I'll be back soon. She um, gave us the impression that she was not really involved in um, act, you know, military action. We later found out she was. <laughs> Anna was involved in fighting in Deir Ezzor, where the Islamic State group were holding the last of their territory. The principles that the Kurdish women's um, group stand for, anybody can see how they're very inspiring. Mm. Uh, but is it worth taking part in violence for? To her it was, yeah. Um, because she believed it was a cause worth fighting for. Mm. What she was doing, fighting in this capacity, would be considered against the law. So how did her actions sit with you? Yeah, but the law would be the, the law was completely wrong in that respect. I wrote to my MP. I said my daughters out in Syria fighting for our allies, the people who are on our side. But then the war changed. Turkey began to attack the Kurds along the northern Syrian border around the town of Afrin. Because of a long and bitter history between these two sides. Turkey sees the Kurdish armed groups as terrorists. The attacks of the Turkish state against the revolution and uh, against the Kurdish people and the people of Kurdistan is very shocking and heavy. As this new conflict broke out, 
Many of those Anna was with went to fight against Turkey in the north, and she made up her mind to go too. Her, her commanders in the YPJ refused to let her. Uh, they said, you're going to stick out like a sore thumb. You um, blonde hair, blue eyed, obviously a foreigner. Uh, she dyed her hair black. She didn't tell anyone that she was going. We would have tried uh, everything. Uh, yeah, I would have tried to stop her, but she probably would have, yeah, I mean, she would have just, just taken, just no, taken notice. no notice. It was in Afrin, say her friends, that Anna was killed by a Turkish airstrike. And her family were given the news. At that moment, that, you know, the bottom of, fell out of my world because I knew she was dead. We're going through the whole gamut of despair, grief, anger, loss, guilt in my case. Do you think that parents should try to do more to stop people going to fight like Anna did? As I say, I know that she would never have forgiven me if I'd stopped her from going. But I feel like I could have done more to raise awareness of what was going on. And we did try, I guess. In fact, when she first told me, I said, is there any way I can stop you going? And she said, no, there's no point in you even trying. So. The potential consequences of fighting in Syria are clear, but it's a risk that some continue to take. Dozens of British citizens have joined Kurdish armed groups. Seven British men have also lost their lives. A vigil has been held for Anna Campbell in Lewis, her hometown, as those who loved her try to come to terms with this loss. <laughs> On the front line, these fighters became her family and their cause became her own. I'm really excited to go and join so many brave friends that are fighting there now.